Hi everybody, Cody here. Today we're going to be talking about inline skate maintenance. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to generally clean the parts, how to rotate our wheels, and how to handle the internals like the bearings, etc. If you've got long hair like me, let's go ahead and tie it up because if you're going to be participating, you will get it dirty or get it in your way if you don't have it out of the way. All right, let's get started. What I'm going to do next is pop up a list of items that you're going to need to do this process. All right, so now that you got a chance to review the tool list, the next thing I want to talk about is, you know, what they're what the different items are for. So first thing I have is some six mil industrial gloves. I use these specifically to keep oil and cleaning materials off my hands. This is optional. Next thing up, we have an old towel. This is a strong suggestion of mine, technically optional, but if you're going to be working on a surface like your, your kitchen table or something like that, and you want to protect it, definitely lay out something to absorb anything that you ideally don't want to, you know, get messy or mess up the varnish, etc. The next thing we have here are my oils. I specifically use Airtool oil. It's got the same viscosity as most of the skate based oils that you'll buy and using it gives you a, you know, an advantage because you can buy it in large quantities. Of course, if you want to use skate specific oils, by all means do. I still do use a, a Bowen speed cream bottle to, to distribute the oil because you really want to do it in small quantities, which we're going to talk about in more detail when we get to that particular step. This is necessary if you're doing bearing cleaning. Next up is our actual Sonic Citrus Cleaner. The Sonic Citrus Cleaner is a really great item. It's it's the type of cleaner that's not water-based and it's going to be better for cleaning your bearings. It's specifically for bearing cleaning, in fact. And I'm going to be using that with a Bones bearing kit, okay, or a bearing cleaner kit. And we're going to talk about how that's used here in a little bit. This is only necessary if you're doing bearings. Next up, we have a safety pin. Simple, you know, nothing, nothing crazy going on there. We're gonna use the point of that to, to peel open our, our bearing seals potentially. You can use fancier thing, but safety pin does the job. So I, I you know, suggest it because it's cheap and you probably already own one. And next up we have thread locker. Thread locker is a chemical compound that will keep your axle screws from coming loose when you're using your skates. Obviously that's a safety issue. I do not consider this optional. If you're gonna be doing any level of skate maintenance where the wheels come off, you should have thread locker. Next up, I have a few different options for my, for my Allen key, which is what we're gonna be using to remove the wheels today. I've got the roller blade tool here. It's got a bearing puller and an Allen head. I've got the Sonic tool as an option. It's got two Allen heads of different sizes, I think four millimeter and five. And then it's got a Phillips head and a little bearing puller on there, which can be useful. And then finally, I've got a simple Allen wrench four millimeter that we can utilize and probably is what we're gonna utilize for the video because I really want you to see what you can do or how, how you can do this at home. And a lot of people might have this but may not have the other two options, but I do want you to know that they are available. Next up, I've got brushes. Now the brushes, you don't technically have to have. I clean my wheels out really well and make sure the dirt's off of them because leaving dirt on your wheels just means that you're gonna to need to do maintenance again sooner because that dirt will eventually get into the bearings. So you really want to clean it off of like the, the internal parts of the wheel there. So we'll, we'll do that here in a little bit. And then I've got these two rags. I've got a dry rag and a wet rag, just, you know, standard microfiber cloth, nothing fancy. And the reason why you want to dry in a wet rag is because if you're going to use a wet rag for anything, if you're going to use water on anything, then you want to immediately dry it off and make sure that that surface is free of water so that you don't have problems with rust and, you know, oxidation and sort of stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to get my station set up now and we are going to get started. Okay, time to get started. So I've got my skates on the table and we're going to get started with the work. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is remove the axles from the skates. In order to do this, you just need to insert your Allen key into the axles, you know, turn it loose. The one thing that I want to point out before we get started with this particular step is you need to pay attention to where the wheels are and try to keep them in that order. So you have your right wheels are one, two, three, four, your left wheels, L one, two, three, four. And you really just want to lay them out in the same order that they're on the skates. Once you remove them, just to go over the removal of the wheel so everybody can see it. I'm just going to take my Allen wrench here going to stick it right into the axle there and I'm just going to turn it to remove this axle. 
Once it's free, I'm gonna pull the axle free, set it aside, and I'm gonna lay down the wheel. And I'm gonna to continue to do this until I have all my wheels laid out on the table. Like I said, in the same order that they came off the skate. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward past this part. Okay, so we've got our wheels off now. And at this point, what we have is we've got some dirty axles, we've got our wheels laid out, We've got our skates here with the frames exposed. And what I'm gonna do at this point is, I'm gonna take my wet rag and I'm going to wipe down the frames before I set my skates aside. And really, you do wanna get in all the places where the axles go. You don't wanna leave like any built-in dirt in there. You wanna wipe the outside, the inside. And like I said, just try to work off any caked on dirt that you see. And then when you finish, like I said earlier, you don't wanna leave water on any skate parts. So you're going to want to make sure and give it a dry rag before you set the skate aside. And that's really all we're going to do with the skate for this particular video. We'll get into some more advanced stuff potentially later. But once you're finished with that, you can set your skate aside. Just remember that your wheels are in a specific order. Like I said, um, the wheels on your left should be your left front wheel to your left back wheel. The wheels on your right should be your right front wheel to your right back wheel. And I'm just going to rinse and repeat and do the same thing on the other frame. Be careful to watch your hands when you do this. You don't want to accidentally cut yourself on the frame. I've been doing this for a while, so I'm pretty adept at it. But if you're still new to it, watch your knuckles. Make sure that you don't accidentally cut yourself doing this. And once again, always, always, always dry things that you make wet with water immediately if you use it at all. All right, now our skates are prepared. And the next piece is some pre-work that we're gonna do on our other pieces. So anytime that you take out your axles, even if you're going to do a wheel rotation, it's a good idea to clean them. They get dirt on them and that dirt will work its way back into the bearings if you allow it to. So in this particular case, we'll go back to our wet rag again. And I'm just going to take each of the axles and I'm just going to wipe them down. Nothing fancy, just making sure that they reasonably have most of the dirt off of them. And you don't want to get, like I said, water in any nooks and crannies. So I wouldn't worry too much about the actual... Uh, receivers on this part. If you do want to clean the receivers, that's a good place to use a brush. And then once you've done this, you want to dry them and set them aside. It doesn't matter the order for the axles. You can change them out however you want. It's irrelevant. They all should work the same unless you have a skate brake axle, which is something that I'll potentially cover in another video if there are specific questions about it. I feel it's fairly self-explanatory if you understand the rest of the process though. So. I wouldn't worry about that too much. So getting started with the bearing maintenance. Now, for the purpose of this video, I really want it to be accessible to everyone. So instead of using like a skate tool, I'm actually just gonna use my Allen wrench and show how this is done. And then I'll probably just kind of more or less fast forward past the next section where I like work out all the bearings. But the idea is simply this. When you work on a bearing, you wanna hold the wheel tightly you want to insert the Allen wrench into the bearing just past the edge of the back and you just want to wiggle it back and forth, left to right, up, down, just kind of vary the direction. And then eventually the bearing is going to pop free just like that. Now you'll notice that when you do the first bearing, the spacer is going to pop out as well. So you want to make sure you don't lose those. So keep those nearby. The bearings and the spacers don't have to go in any particular order. So there's no reason to worry about preserving this, but always place the wheels back where you got them. And then, like I said, I'm just going to work my way through the rest of these. And uh, then we will get on to the next step. Okay, so for this next part, you know, we've got all our parts out here. And, and really what we want to do at this point is, is clean everything that you see here. The bearings are the most complicated thing to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the wheels. What happens with the wheels is they'll get a lot of dirt, you know, in the area there. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take these, we're going to pick them up, and then we're going to take a, our brush, and we're just going to brush those out. Just try to get as much of that loose dirt out of there as possible. Just dust it off. I mean, effectively, this is dusting, more or less. 
We're just gonna dust these and then put them back where they go for now. And there's gonna be a second step here in just a second. It's also pretty basic. Okay, so after you've done this, the next thing to do is to wipe down the wheels. This is one of those places where this is all polyurethane for the most part. There's gonna be exceptions to this statement. If you've got like a metal interior area here, then you're gonna to wanna to be careful about this next part and potentially not use a wet rag, or if you do, just make sure you wipe them off immediately. But I'm gonna use my wet rag here, and I'm just gonna make sure that I get as much of that dust as possible. Just a good wipe down of the wheels. Just wiping them down, putting them where they go. For this part, they will dry on their own if you don't have to dry them because of metal. They'll dry on their own before it effectively is going to matter. So I wouldn't worry too much about getting into the weeds on drying each of these necessarily. Um, with a damp rag, it should leave a minimal amount of moisture. But once again, the key here is just we're trying to make sure that these wheels have as little dirt on them as reasonably possible for when we go on to our final stage of uh, reassembling the skate. With our wheels clean, the next part is to do the spacers. The spacers get like, let me try to show this. The spacers get oil and dirt right there along the edge primarily, and sometimes it gets in the middle. This is a pretty easy thing to deal with. What you wanna do is you wanna take your dry rag, this is gonna be metallic, and take your dry rag, Swipe that oil, just kind of absorb it. And then if you want to get a little bit more in, you know, detailed, I guess you could say, what you can do is you can take your uh, Allen wrench or whatever your skate tool is, and you can put it in your rag and just use that to work the center. Okay, so we've got clean wheels, we've got clean spacers, we got clean axles, we got dirty bearings, dirty bearings. So for the dirty bearings, uh, I'm just going to give them one wipe down because sometimes the internal ring is going to be pretty dirty. Um, usually if the spacers look really dirty, the internal ring is going to be dirty. So I'm just going to wipe that down on both sides real quick. For all of them. All right. So just a heads up on the whole bearing cleaning concept. Um, if you have taken your wheels out and taken out your bearings and you've got one that looks like this where it's got a metal plate on the side and uh, the back it just kind of looks like a ring, this is what's called a non-serviceable bearing. It's not impossible to service it, but you generally shouldn't. They're intended to be replaced by the time that this point comes. The bearing cleaning process is for the types of bearings that have removable shields and when you remove those shields, you should be able to see straight through them on both sides, just like that. Okay, now that these guys are cleaned, this is where we get onto the slightly tougher part. For this, I'm gonna to try to get pretty close to the camera to show it um, effectively though. This is where our safety pin is gonna come in. Now, anytime that you're dealing with a safety pin or anything sharp, especially when you have gloves and stuff on, obviously they're not gonna protect you from this. So you want to be excessively careful. Now the way that this works is each one of these bearings has a bearing shield and when you press in the safety pin to the edge you're going to be able to press that shield down and then if you get around the edge of the shield and you pry it you're going to be able to lift that bearing plate out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it here on the table and then I'm going to show what that bearing plate looks like when it comes out should be able to just really easily get that off there, okay? And so there's the plate, and there's the inside of the bearing. Now, important but annoying fact, there are two of these shields on each bearing. So you're gonna need to take them all off for the cleaning process. So this is gonna be a fairly boring process, so I might speed right through this. But I'm gonna take off all the bearing shields to prepare my bearings for the next step. And then we're going to talk about how to clean the bearing shields as well. So we've gotten to the point where we've got all our bearing shields off. There's a few ways you can go from here. I'm going to show you my preference. 
You can just use a dry rag to do this if you want. But what I do is I use the citrus cleaner that I'm ultimately going to use on the bearings themselves because it's safe for the seals. And I make a little spot on my rag that I can access with my fingertip. And yes, I go through and wipe down each and every one of them just to make sure that I'm not leaving dirt and oil on the seal itself because that would be a little bit counterintuitive to our process, am I right? Unfortunately, since there are 16 bearings, there's going to be 32 shields. Uh, this process, you know, is a little bit time intensive, but it's definitely worth the effort. Um, so it's something that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I suggest doing like once a quarter on skates that you use commonly. And if you haven't used the skate probably for like, I'd say more than like a month or two, I would probably service it before you use it again, just depending on a few details. Obviously, if it has non-serviceable bearings, there's no point in that. But anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to wipe down my shields. And then we're just going to leave those set aside for now. And then we're going to get into the fun part, which is going to be the actual bearing cleaning. It's actually super simple with the bones cleaning kit. There's other ways that you could potentially do this. I would not suggest them um, unless it's something fancier um, than what I'm going to show you. As I mentioned before, I want this video to be accessible to just about anybody that watches it. So I'm trying to use things that are affordable tools that you either have around the house already, or if you don't have them around the house, that there's something that you could reasonably buy, or if, you know, if you're a skating enthusiast, you should have, more or less. Anyway, so in our next stage, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take these bearings and we are going to set them up in the bones cleaning kit, which is actually very straightforward and nice, but there's a few things that people aren't very sure about about using the kit, so I'm gonna cover those things. It doesn't matter the order of the shields or what bearings they go back onto, that is irrelevant, so don't worry about it. It is an unnecessary stressor in this situation. So in the bones bearing kit, when you take off the top, you'll notice that there's these separators. Those are gonna be used to separate the bearings on this main piece here that's gonna be used to wash them. And that's gonna make a lot of sense shortly. So bear with me, I'll just kind of show you up close those parts, okay? What we're gonna do is, and like I said, people will have different opinions about this. I fill the, the bottle to just where the the bump ends here at the bottom, there's like a little base ring. You don't need a lot of bearing cleaner in here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna splash it around. Make sure that you're careful not to splash your eyes or anything with this. It would not feel nice per se, and it would probably be pretty hard to deal with. So be careful. Once you have some bearing cleaner solution in the bottom of your bones bearing kit, you're gonna set that to the side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount up eight of the bearings at a time on this central spindle and I've got a little bit of dirt and stuff on this from previous use so I'm going to wipe that down before I actually mount the bearings. Very straightforward, dry rag, done. Okay so what we do is we're going to, we're going to take a bearing. Technically it doesn't matter which direction you do this though I have a theory that maybe it would be a little bit better if you have the the ball Ray, or the top of the balls for the bearing facing upward. So if you can see the race and you can see the balls as opposed to the back seal. I would probably put that one downwards because that's what you really want the liquid to penetrate the most and it's gonna be hitting them hardest in that direction. But what you do is you take the bearings, you put them on just like this, you put on a spacer, then you put on a bearing, then you put on a spacer, bearing, spacer, bearing, spacer. I could continue saying it, but I think we all get the point. And you, can't, you keep doing this until you run out of spacers, if you don't really want to count how many you've put on there yet. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so we need to put on one more. And that makes eight. And this is how many you can clean at a time. This is not a big deal, um, you'll see. Once we get this done, we'll be able to quickly get these off and put the next ones on with little to no effort. So we're going to put these in the kit 
as such. And like I kind of stated before, like you really don't want to have too much of the citrus cleaner in there because you don't really need to drown that bottom one. You just need to have enough in there that it's going to splash the bearings. And then once it's in the kit, here's what you do. You shake it. And then shaking this in different angles and directions will help the cleaner splash through the bearings, wash out the dirt, the existing oil with this thin citrus oil that's going to you know, ultimately dry very quickly here. And then once that's finished, we'll be able to put our bearings back together. Okay, so you can get as extreme with this as you want. I will suggest this. If you have especially dirty bearings, it's a good idea to shake them up, wait a little bit for things to kind of get soaked in there, and then give it another shake once things break free. I mean, if you really got build up, but usually, that's not going to be the case. So once you finish shaking these up, just kind of tap them off. Don't swing this around too much when it comes out because you don't want to splash yourself with the cleaner, right? Just keep it gentle coming out the top. And then when you finish this step, all you're going to do is take them and just lay them out, okay? Just lay them out, lay them out to dry. And then while these are doing their thing, and we're gonna, we're gonna kind of pat dry them too, just to kind of speed along the process here. But while these are drying, we're gonna go ahead and load up our next eight, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna find a clean spot on my rag, and I'm just gonna, like I said, work these over just a little bit. Just kind of speeding along the process. Not a big deal to have, honestly, the cleaner still in there because it's gonna, you know, mix well, like the, the remaining portion of it will mix well with the oil and not really cause any issues. But, you know, as I mentioned, we just want to dry these off to a reasonable degree and they'll be given a little bit of time here before we do our next step, which is gonna be the oiling. All right, and then when you finish with this important little note so you don't lose any parts, make sure you take all your little spacers and put them back in your kit. Okay, should have seven of those. And then I just put on the screw a little bit. Doesn't really matter, but you just don't want to lose the parts. You can use the cleaner a few times. There's no reason to throw it out unless it's, you know, become too dirty to be functional, I guess. But pretty much it's got a little bit of darkness to it now. If, it, if you know, you use it like maybe two times would be acceptable. And then you should change it out. It doesn't take a lot of it though. So generally the citrus cleaner lasts a while and it's not very expensive. Okay, so I'm going to do the same drying technique here. Just going to dry these off finding a decent spot on the rag and then we're going to prep the bearings for the next stage. So now it's time to finish up. So our final steps are pretty easy. There's a few things to know. So like I said, on the bearings there's two sides. One side you can see the bearings and one side you can't. Okay, so here's the side where you can see the bearings. Here's the side where you can't, okay? What you want to do is you want to take your seals and you want to put them back on the side that you cannot see the bearings, okay? So take them one at a time and you can just pop them on. Pretty straightforward. Whoop. Well, maybe not. Anyway, so I'm going to go through and pop these on, on all the backs. So now I'm just checking to make sure I have the backs on all the bearings. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Now we're in this stage, we're ready to do the oil. As I stated before, I have my oil in this speed cream container. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna put three drops of oil or two, your choice, on each one. We don't wanna do excess oil because oil attracts dirt. And if you put too much oil in your bearing, it'll start to leak out. 
And if it starts to leak out, then the dirt gets in there and then you, I mean, ultimately have to do your maintenance sooner, which is obviously not a good idea. So we're just gonna go through and do that. And it doesn't technically matter where you put the oil in. Um, so I prefer to spread it out just to make things a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the oil and I'm gonna put in one, two, three drops. And then as I finish, I'm gonna move this to the side so I know which ones I've done. One. Now that the oiling portion is done, the next move is going to be to put on the seals. We're gonna go through and seal them all. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take each bearing, hold the middle, okay? Hold the middle and then spin it to distribute the oil. We wipe them down. Now we're done with our oil and we are ready to start the reassembly process. So what you're going to need is you're going to need to first, and this is how I generally do it. You're gonna to wanna to take one bearing and put it in each wheel. So you just take the bearing, okay? We're just gonna take it, pop one in each of our wheels. Now that there's a bearing in each wheel, I'm going to turn them all over. Put in a spacer. Make sure it's flat. And just so you can see this a little bit better, I'm actually going to show it. So here you can see the bearing in the back. I'm just going to take and put that spacer in flat, just like that. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna take our other bearings and we're gonna put that in on this side. Now all of our wheels are reassembled and got our axles ready um, for reinstallation. So what we want to do at this point is we want to rotate the wheels. Now, rotating the wheels is something that you can do a lot of different ways. I'm going to show you my method. And the reason I use this method is because in my method, when you rotate the wheels, every wheel, each time you rotate, will end up in a new position. And if you continue to follow the rotation plan, then each wheel will be in every position for an equal amount of time, which means that theoretically they should wear down at the ideal rate. Um, so the way that this works is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your number four wheels, okay, and you're going to take them and you're going to move them to the front. They're going to become the new number one wheels. And then this is the one part that's going to change sometimes. If you have an even number of wheels, like four wheels or six or two for that matter, the rotation changes each time you reach the number of wheels that you have in rotation. So every fourth rotation with four wheels, 
you'll do something slightly different, okay? For this reason, it's important if you have an even number of wheels to keep track. If you have three wheels, then you never need to do this extra step. So the way that it works is after you've taken your fourth wheel and moved them forward for the first three rotations, in the case of four wheels, you're going to take them and you're going to swap sides. If it's your fourth rotation, then you do not swap sides. You leave them in place. That is the one special rotation rule. Now, once you've done this, you want to go ahead and also rotate your other wheels to the other side. Now, there's a final piece that's very important to know because like during the process, you might have flipped the wheels over or anything else. And so the thing to know is when you look at the wheel right along the edge, you want to determine which side is less worn. So in this case, when you look at this, you can see this side's worn down more, this side's worn down less. And so what I'm going to do is I want to put this towards the inside. Okay. Now the way that my process is going to work, the inside is going to be the side that faces up when I go to actually reattach them to the skates. So I'm going to place the less worn side facing up. So I'm going to look at each wheel. I'm going to make the same judgment call on each one. So it just so happens that I landed all this side up. It is not important that all your wheels look the same. It's more important that the less worn side is on the inside. Okay. Now, once you get to this point, the wheels are ready, the bearings are ready, everything is good to go. So now what we're going to do is we are going to mount them onto our skates. So the way to do this, we're going to take everything else out of the way now. Bring our skates up. Okay, as you can see, the insides of my skates are facing up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our wheel and an axle. Okay, wheel and an axle. We're going to put it in place. Let's bring this to the center so you can see a little better. Put it in place so that it lines up like that. Take our axle, slide it on through, and then what we want to do is give it a little bit of a turn, just enough so it stays in place. Do not tighten it. Do not tighten it all the way yet. Okay, leave it just like that. We're going to do this to all the wheels. So now that this step is done, we're ready to do our final stage, which for this part, my suggestion is to turn it so you can see the um, axle receiver side, because what we need to do is we need to put thread locker on that little section right there. And my personal preference is to do them one at a time so that the thread locker material doesn't get in any place where it shouldn't. Naturally, that's a bad thing. So you're going to need to do two things. Number one, you're going to want to have your tool ready, whatever you're going to use to tighten the axles. And then number two, you're going to want to have your thread locker material ready. Right here, I'm going to be using this blue medium strength thread locker. And what we're going to do is we're going to put, I'm going to get this really close here. We're going to be putting the thread locker right in the edge of that receiver. And we just want a drop of it right along those threads. Okay, so that's the plan. And then after you put the thread locker in those threads, we are then going to do a little bit of tightening. Okay. And once again, you don't want to get the thread locker anywhere but on those threads. So just take it and ever so gently put a drop just like that. Okay, actually, hold on. And then we're going to tighten it a little bit just to make sure that none of that thread locker gets to the bearing. Okay, that's the key there. And then good idea to have your rag handy your dry rag, any excess that comes out, just wipe that off. Okay, you're gonna have to do this more than once, so just kind of mentally prepare for that. So we get this on there. Okay. 
And there's a reason I'm not tightening them all the way at this point. We're going to talk about that once I'm through the thread locker portion here. So just bear with me here for a second while we work through this. So now that the thread locker is on there and we're ready to finish the tightening process, the important thing to know is like anytime that you're tightening up the frame, you just want to make sure specifically to avoid tightening the bolts entirely like right off the bat. You want to make sure that you tighten them a little bit at a time in order to smoothly connect the frame sides. Because if you tighten all in one place and then the next place, it can cause tension to occur in the different lengths of the frame and can cause the frame to bend over time, which isn't ideal. So I'll go ahead and do that process now. And you can just kind of watch. Okay, got him with a dry rag. Okay. Now that we're done with that skate, we're just going to do the same thing on this side. Like I said, we're just going to tighten them one turn at a time until they're all snug. Don't want to over tighten it because then the wheel might have trouble turning. So when you finish the tightening process, sometimes it'll cause some of the thread locker to come out here, which is why I'm wiping it down. If you use your wet rag first, it'll make it easier to deal with that excess thread locker there. So I'm just going to wipe that down. Dry rag. Okay, now we're just going to test and make sure all the wheels turn freely. And then this last step, this thing that I'm doing where I pull the wheel back and forth, that's just to make sure that the bearing is fully set. If for any reason you didn't push it all the way in, this will kind of snap that into place. Okay. And with this, we're finished with the maintenance process. A few more things to cover. Let's go ahead and set these here and talk about a few additional items. So first things first, thread locker sets in 10 minutes, but it fully sets after several hours. So you want to at least leave them sit for 10 minutes if you can before you use them. It's better if you can wait several hours. So, you know, kind of up to you how you want to do that. As long as you inspect the uh, frame afterwards and you find that the the axle screws aren't you know moving from their set positions you know you're probably good to go some other things that kind of come up so we're not going to get too much into cleaning the boot itself because there's a lot of variation in the types of materials like these here are um, new mesh leather and so the way that you like restore these is to use sandpaper on them but like that's not going to apply you know if you have like a a standard like plastic shell etc so we'll probably do separate I'll probably do separate videos on that but 
for general, you know, questions. One thing that comes up a lot is the laces. So if you use regular laces, then, you know, there's not really much of a difference if you don't change them out. But if you use wax laces like I do, and those do wear out over time. Usually you want to change out your wax laces every six months. And that'll make sure that they hold tight and all that good stuff. Um, if you have any specific questions about skate maintenance or if you'd like to know like about something I didn't cover or something that's really specific to your model, there's a few things about like this process that I've shown that are going to differ depending on the types of skates that you have. So if you, for example, have like, you know, um, the double-sided axles, if you have like the very rare skates that use a torque wrench instead of an Allen wrench or something like that and you have questions about it, definitely let me know. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but the, the, the big key factors here are, you know, make sure you're using thread locker for your own safety. If you have serviceable bearings, then, you know, like I said, service them probably once a quarter. If you have non-serviceable bearings, they'll usually last longer. They're also called sealed bearings because that, that metal seal that you saw earlier, I'll bring it back up here. The metal sealed version, they, they're really protected in a very strong way from dirt getting in there. So they last longer, generally speaking, and that's one of the advantages of them. But like I said, these really should be replaced. You can take off the metal shield, but after that, they're pretty terrible. So I don't suggest it. You know, if you've serviced your bearings a number of times or if you look in there and you see like corrosion, like you see rust buildup or something because they got left wet too long or something, then you should probably just go ahead and replace those. I use ceramic bearings. That's not to say that I, my bearings are immune to rust because the outsides are still metal. But I will say that they have some advantages. I'll probably do a separate video talking about the different types of bearings and what all that means because that's kind of a whole deal or a whole topic in itself. But anyway, thank you for your time and watching this. I really hope that it helps if this isn't something you've done before or if it's something you have done and you just really wanted to see a different method maybe. Like I said, I'm open to questions, comments, or anything that might come up. And, you know, I hope that if you do this, that your skates are in great condition and you really get to enjoy them for a long time. The biggest thing that I would like to add before we finish is just, even though the bearings should only be done, like, like I said, like once every three months or so, the wheel rotations should be done regularly. It's better if you do them like once a month. And I can also do a quick and dirty video on just like how to do just a wheel rotation at some point. But you should do your wheel rotations probably once a month, depending on how often you skate. And that'll keep your wheels lasting a lot longer. Anytime that you inspect your wheels though, and you see that, let's see here. So anytime if you inspect your wheels and you find that the material of the wheels is like cut over so that this ridge is to the side by any extreme, then that is a definite sign that it's time for you to, you know, rotate immediately. If, you know, if it gets down to the point where really the core is at all exposed, then you should be replacing the wheels. Anyway, like I said, let me know if you have any questions. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks again.